the nascent Salarian Federation dispatched four vessels to the recently linked Nexus realm. A pair of newly commissioned Thunderbolt-class battleships, their angular radar-deflecting profiles and numerous pod launchers giving them a menacing appearance acted as escorts. The streamlined SFDS Enigma and the enormous SFMAS Behemoth transported billions of dollars in uplift materials and provisions, and the functional SFAV Sanctuary brought its contingent of physicians, engineers, and emergency personnel along for the journey. The humans spared no expense as they prepared for their initial trade war with the Stellarians, but they needn't have worried. Upon jumping through to the Luminan system, they found the consortium in full retreat. There was a good reason for this, too. The Luminan sun was collapsing. As the galactic vessels retreated, the Terrans pressed on. Undeterred by the enormous bursts of plasma erupting from the star, they pushed ahead. The SFAV sanctuary spearheaded the advance. Elder of Groves was frightened. He had brought his three fosterlings to the surface as the sun was setting, anticipating spending a few hours reveling in Zara's excited cries as his oldest charge took her initial steps outside the warrens. She had barely managed two unsteady steps when something enormous plummeted from the sky merely a hundred meters away. After gathering up his scared toddler and ensuring her two younger siblings were securely fastened to his back, he'd inched forward in the direction where the object had come down. Being an eldest, it was his duty to examine it. What he'd witnessed stunned him. His sharp night vision had effortlessly discerned the armored figure hunched over a metal container, extracting odd instruments and attaching them to his suit. It was enormous. Luminon were stocky, burrowing mammals, their spade-like faces characterized by two enormous eyes and a long snout. Their two-legged arms and legs were muscular and thick. Their bones were sturdy and their hands and feet ended in blunt claws, well adapted for digging through the compact rock and soil of Lumina. Alongside the visitor from the sky, they looked downright fragile. Eldest of Field's analogy was interrupted when the humans shifted towards the concealed Luminan and addressed them in a distinct and flawless voice. I'm Corporal Thorne from the Salarian Federation Auxiliary Ship Lifeline. Your planet is on the verge of being engulfed in flames. The following hours were filled with chaos. Elder of Groves had swiftly guided him underground, where the human had urgently beseeched the local elders to listen to his warning and evacuate. They had not heeded him. Even their distant warren, situated halfway across the planet from the capital, had received stories via the semaphores about the perilous and deceitful visitors from above. But we're not like them, the human had pleaded. We're different. Still... You both hail from above, Elder of Cavern had observed calmly. One can extract nothing but venom from a corrupted spring. The council had allowed him to complete his case, then had requested Elder of Groves to accompany him back to his drop pod. During the walk back, the human soldier had thrown the Luminan a translator, removed his helmet, and persisted with his argument. Zara had observed him warily from her concealed position behind Elder of Groves' leg as he talked. We aren't members of the consortium. Those rodent fellows you've been negotiating with? They're treacherous, gutless scum. They glimpsed what your son was doing and fled. We're going to remain. Elder of Groves had moved his elongated snout in a sympathetic manner. How can we determine what's genuine? Any evidence you present could potentially be part of some deception. It isn't, the human had stated bluntly. He ceased attempting to argue after that, and they'd continued on in silence. Eldest of Field's pair of youngest charges had only just started to clamber around on the human's form, eliciting a gruff chuckle from the soldier when the planet perished. A surge of superheated air rushed through the tunnel, stripping the meticulously grown lichens from the walls and pulling at the wooden support beams. It knocked Zara and Elder of Groves off their feet, leaving them dazed on the ground. The human was hardly affected by it. The emergency response technician had responded to the gale with extraordinary quickness. He'd swiftly removed his two small passengers from his back, held them close to his chest to protect them from the storm, and ducked down to cover the two remaining Lumina in a matter of moments. He remained in that position as the heat wave died down. A compact cannon unfolded on his right shoulder and began to fire bursts of fire suppressant at numerous small blazes. The oxygen-rich atmosphere of Lumina caused any flame to burn fiercely, 
the thousands of slow-burning glow mold and breath fungus clusters dislodged by the gust provided it fuel and an easy path to spread. Surrounding them, the warren was ablaze. The ERT handed over breath masks, fire-resistant cloaks, and a small beacon to eldest of field. You recall that atrium we went by on our way in? Bring your children there. The rescue team will look there first. The luminan gazed up at him. It didn't require an expert to notice that the scorching air and numerous debris impacts had left the human's armor impaired. You're accompanying us? Hell no, I'm needed, he stated, gesturing with his thumb back toward where the tunnels were gradually catching fire. Embers drifted through the air like spores as they spread the blaze between support beams. Only the human's compact fire suppression turret prevented the budding inferno from engulfing their small group. It was the Luminan's turn to plead. You'll never make it out. The human shrugged as he stepped towards the blaze. Today's as good a day as any other. Now get those children out. Elder of Groves spent a moment gazing at the human in shock. Then he compelled his frantic mind to act. The Luminan began moving down the tunnel, shrinking beneath his cloak as the air above them seared. His two youngest softly whimpered into their masks while clinging to his back, and Zara hurried alongside him, enveloped in a covering of her own. When she'd scrambled up onto his back with her siblings, a jolt of pain had forced Elder of Groves to the ground. He'd nearly dropped the cloak that protected his two youngest from the swirling clouds of flaming mold. Not even the breath mask could conceal the heavy odor of ash and charred flesh that filled the air. The flames devoured everything. Zara started to waver. Elder of Groves attempted to cover her eyes from the scorched remains of two Luminan and their fosterlings, pulling her along as the passage started to crumble around them. Chunks of singed earth and smoldering timber dropped nearby. Then a big chunk of the roof hit Elder of Groves, and he fell to the ground, his legs trapped. Zara freaked out and rushed into a nearby tunnel. Zara! Elder of Groves rasped faintly. His breath mask had apparently slipped when he'd collapsed as any additional words were overwhelmed by a fit of coughing. The frail, defenseless form was quickly engulfed by the inferno. Elder of Groves examined his two surviving charges automatically, scarcely registering his youngest fractured arm. Unable to extricate his legs, he collected his remaining fosterlings beneath their sheltering cloak and awaited death. Lacking a breath mask, he drifted in and out of consciousness as his fevered brain conjured hallucinations. He dreamed of being rescued, with metal-clad saviors bursting through the flames to reach him. He watched distantly as they calmly confronted the fire, reinforcing the tunnel even as it burned around them. One of them shielded Elder of Groves and his two remaining fosterlings from a second bundle of earth by throwing himself over them. The Luminan felt a hint of surprise that the collapsing tunnels and raging inferno didn't seem to trouble them, but it made sense that his imaginary rescuers would be fearless. They weren't real, after all. Then someone placed a breath mask over Eldest of Field's snout, and he understood that they were. He attempted to point at the narrow side passage where Zara had escaped, tried to plead for them to search for his little girl, but his energy failed him. He scarcely managed to raise a hand. One of the humans, noticing his weak gesture, knelt down. We'll rescue everyone. Don't worry. Just stay still. A rescuer quickly liberated Eldest of Field's legs and transported him and his two fosterlings out of the Warrens. The meticulously maintained surface crops had vanished, burned away by the enormous wave of heat, and strong winds swept across the surface of the lifeless planet with lightning flashing in the distance. Three human shuttles rested amid the devastation like shining beacons of hope. Elder of Groves, overwhelmed, slipped into unconsciousness. The Luminan Elder woke to the sound of his translator. He's the only council member we've got. We need him. He ought to be put on the next flight out, not hauled off to the command center. Eldest of Field's eyes fluttered open. The two fosterlings who had survived were nestled against his chest, sound asleep. I'm staying. What do you want me to do? One of the pair of humans chuckled. Seems I've come out on top, Doc. We'll be getting our tunnel specialist after all. The physician exhaled softly and passed the controls for Elder of Groves' bed. The second human presented himself as he guided the Luminan out of the medical bay. Lieutenant Raya Voss, Terran Naval Intelligence, 
were attempting to assist the 5th Swift Action Battalion in focusing their rescue operations more effectively, we need you to indicate areas where survivors are most likely to gather. A holographic image of the Warren materialized in front of Elder of Groves as the intelligence officer proceeded. The initial five levels were totally destroyed when the flare struck. You and your children are the sole survivors we rescued from those areas. The fire is currently lingering around the 8th and ninth levels. We've managed to clear a path up to the 11th, but we're uncertain how long it will remain open. The elder gave a nod and began marking areas on the map with a vacant expression. The water reservoirs likely contain survivors, so he indicated it. He then did likewise for the nursery creche, the assembly hall, and several of the bigger mushroom farms. Geary nodded in approval. All right, we'll attempt to redirect our focus in that direction. Would you mind if we kept you on standby? We may require your assistance later on. Elder of Groves concurred. Any activity to stay occupied, any distraction to push Zara from his thoughts. Geary placed the hospital bed in the operations bay and left to file a report. The Luminan caressed the tiny, delicate heads of his surviving fosterlings and surveyed the surroundings. The middle of the deck was dominated by an enormous projection of the tunnels, with the human responders depicted as tiny blinking dots. A single path down was highlighted in blue, while the others were shown in different shades of red. There was an abundance of red. The left-hand portion of the room housed roughly a dozen ERTs preparing themselves for another venture back into the Warrens. The right-hand section was occupied by nearly a hundred small screens displaying the helmet cameras of those already underground. A melancholy melody played through the speakers, its tones unmistakably bird-like. Elder of Groves quickly became absorbed in the screens, humans rushing through crumbling tunnels to pull dazed luminans to safety, humans excavating buried luminans even as their heat shields overwhelmed them and their skin blistered and scorched and humans using their bodies to protect trapped luminans. A hundred screens displayed humans endangering life and limb in the burning warrens. Some of them didn't make it back to the ship. Displays went dark one after another as people perished. Some were crushed when the tunnels caved in around them. Some burned to death when their overtaxed suits malfunctioned. And some were pinned by tumbling rocks, forced to watch their oxygen reserves diminish. All of them faced their demise courageously. An hour passed, and close to a third of the screens had gone dark. Elder of Groves was observing two rescuers as they broke through into the water reservoirs when a voice he recognized spoke from nearby. Glad you managed to get out, Slater remarked. It felt as if days had passed since the corporal had attempted to alert the council about the impending danger. Where's the other little one? Eldest of Field's voice sounded heavy. She didn't survive. We got separated. Slater's whole demeanor changed. A quick business-like attentiveness took the place of his earlier fatigue. Where did you last see her? She darted into one of the side corridors close to where I was discovered. I was trapped and unable to pursue. It's not important, though. You'll... Hold on. What are you doing? The corporal had activated his helmet and faced the exit once more. He wasn't paying attention. A supply tech approached him and said in a voice loud enough for Elder of Groves to overhear. The recharge cells are nearly depleted, and the sappers claim the entire warren is on the verge of collapse. You won't be heading back out. I've got 35 minutes of activity. Need to retrieve that anteater's young daughter. Doctrines say nobody goes in with less than two hours. Screw the regulations. That child was under my care, and I'm returning to get her. Any additional objections from the tech were ignored as Slater pushed past him. Elder of Groves turned his attention back to the screens to observe. No one halted Slater as he strode back through the warrens. Upon reaching the location where Elder of Groves had been saved, he hesitated. The ship's screens displayed access footage from the rescue, and shortly after, he set off into a side passage. In the side corridors, the smoldering mold had sunk to the floor and created a dense layer of embers. Slater trudged through them, disregarding his suit's complaining heat warnings. When collapsed debris obstructed his way, he moved it aside. When the corridor suddenly terminated in a cave-in, he retrieved a tool from his belt and blasted through it. When the ceiling groaned and seemed ready to collapse on him, he pressed onward nonetheless. Slater's remaining power dipped under half, 
and the image on his screen froze for an almost unnoticeable moment. Then it resumed moving forward. The corporal discovered Zara with eleven minutes of power remaining. The small luminan was huddled in a ball beneath her cloak, still breathing through her mask. Slater gathered her up, pulled her to his chest, and began heading back through the tunnel. Aboard the ship, Elder of Groves felt a glimmer of hope stirring within him. Then the suit's power failed and it dropped to the ground. It split open and Slater emerged, snatched a mask, and began rushing ahead with Zara held in his arms. The ERT quickly disappeared from the helmet camera's view. He hadn't wrapped himself in a fire cloak. There weren't any left. The coxswain aboard the shuttle, a Keldor, called out, Warren's beginning to leave. We've finished here. A number of armored men and women, preparing to return to the tunnels, began to object. The Keldor's furious yell silenced them. The tunnels are collapsing. You can't do anything more but die. Elder of Groves held his two fosterlings close and gazed at the projection in horror, as numerous tunnels shifted from red to black. Nine flashing dots were stranded in the lower levels, isolated as the human soul path to the depths collapsed. Just one dot moved swiftly ahead of the quickly spreading black. Its display revealed a human advancing with a slightly impaired run. Elder of Groves didn't observe the final survivor exit the tunnel, and he scarcely heard the cheer that arose as the figure hobbled into the bay. He failed to notice that the lone survivor was actually two, an armored individual supporting an injured human clad only in a scorched skin suit. The Luminan didn't even glimpse the unarmored human stumble forward, dragging an injured leg behind him, and set his small furry bundle at the foot of his bed. Elder of Groves was mentally elsewhere. It caught him off guard when Zara released a joyful squeal and leapt into his arms. As the small luminan nestled her face into her guardian's fur, Elder of Groves snapped back to the present and attempted earnestly to express gratitude to the courageous human corporal. He was unable to. While the humans cheered once more, Elder of Groves shed tears of happiness. Epilogue Deep within an underground shelter on Earth, the seven members of the Salarian Grand Assembly were seated quietly. A document, handwritten and manually duplicated to ensure its contents remained confidential, was placed in front of them. An aged, silver-haired individual remarked, So the consortium went through with it after all. Not exactly, replied the Keldor sitting beside him. A Vril pirate gang installed it, obtaining the bomb and the money from a suspected consortium shell company. We're unable to conclusively prove anything. And even if we were able to, chimed in a young human woman, I'm not certain we'd want to. Fleet might benefit from another few years to roll out the second wave of new vessels. Our ability to mount offensives will be constrained until that point. We still know full well that they were behind it, muttered the white-haired man. Seems wrong to not retaliate against them. Oh, we'll retaliate, said the most recent addition to the council. But we'll do it when we're certain of victory when we know we can utterly defeat them, and we'll ensure they're completely caught off guard. The assembled humans in Keldor vocally expressed their agreement. From his recently acquired position at the table, Elder of Groves coiled his trunk with icy contentment. Lumina would not fade from memory. Lumina would be vindicated. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.